would like for you to explain your influence in disco and house. Well, you know, the thing with disco is that when I was a teenager in the 70s, I used to really hate it because in France, the kind of disco we had was the very commercial side of disco. It's like today, if you call house music what you hear on the radio by people like Ghetto Black Eyed Peas, it was the same 30 years ago. So it wasn't something that I was into. And then when the first wave of house music came in, um, you know, mid 80s, like 85, 86, uh, I thought that was something new that I really liked and I was trying to figure out how those people came up with this sound and it turned out you know it was a variation an electronic variation of black American disco which is the disco sound we never got to hear in France and I started digging into the influences of house music and it was mostly disco from uh, Philadelphia or from New York or from Chicago and I uh, absolutely loved it it was a true revelation and uh, I was amazed at how I could have passed this by because we had so much crap music at the time that we were calling disco. So that's how it came. It came through house music because it was the roots of house music. It's actually, I did a radio show from uh, 85 till 1999. It was kind of the first like show that you could hear all over the country that was playing, you know, the early house music stuff. Let's talk about what you've done for fashion, Chanel, Lagerfeld, Gautier. Okay. Well, in the mid-90s, I was doing a lot of remixes and I was having the radio show and I was approached by uh, a gentleman called Michel Gobert, who was a, a sound director for uh, Chanel. And uh, together we started doing like a new way of uh, fashion show music, which was introducing the DJ factor of uh, mixing it together and making it like a seamless program, which was something that was very new at the time. And uh, expanding from there, I uh, started also with Michel composing original music uh, for Chanel. And a lot of this original music uh, ended up uh, being used in my first album, Sacre Bleu, like in the late 90s. Playboy Mansion. The whole Playboy Mansion albums, it was a series that it wasn't meant to be a series to start with, but uh, it was uh, for me interesting because it was a way to push the music that I liked, which was not commercial, uh, to people that usually, you know, were only interested in the mainstream dance music. And because Playboy had such a strong brand, it kind of introduced music that was not familiar to people this way and I think it's always good to use mediums that people can understand uh, to push something that they're not used to so this is kind of my philosophy use like sort of a mainstream platform to push something that initially is not mainstream so that was the goal of the Playboy album and it became a series and somehow it, it pushed me towards the mainstream but I still keep my style which is trying to play music that is not the most uh, I guess commercial one. That's a nice touch because you can mix somehow uh, the underground and somewhat the mainstream. I don't like the concept of underground that the moment it goes overground it's bad. If it's good music it's great that it goes overground because more people can listen to good music as opposed to the manufacturer crap that you know a lot of the big major labels are pushing in it to the people so I believe that if it's good you have to take it from the underground and present it to as many people as you can to make them understand it. That's how music can go forward. If underground stays underground, there's no point of making it because only like five people know about it. Are you working 
working on anything now that you can talk about that you're going to release soon? I'm still working, collaborating with uh, DJ Roca and uh, Goma Records on a few releases and uh, also there is a collaboration with uh, Aeroplane which is a producer I like very much so he's started his label in Belgium and we're going to do something together soon and I'm also co-producing the, the album from uh, Los Amigos Invisibles which is like a, a Latin funk band from New York so this is a, a kind of a different project because it's not exactly house music but I like to do a lot of different things so I have a different influences and it's great for me to be able to you know showcase those in different projects